TikTok. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this TikTok viral wet eyelash makeup look. Um, so for this video, I'm going to be using these wet look lashes from Kiss. So I got two styles. I got the one called You Do You and then I got the one called Drenched. So I got two styles that I'm willing to try out for you guys. And I wanted to see um, if I could recreate this look without really prepping too much. So let's see where it goes. Okay, before we start, I want to let you guys know about my school, Hyperreal Academy at hyperrealacademy.com, where I will be teaching permanent beauty fundamentals. And this is an AAM Platinum registered course. So if you want to work in the state of New Jersey, this is one of the ways to do it legally, and you will get a certification from both the AAM and Hyperreal Academy. Permanent beauty is one of the few industries left out there, in the beauty industry at least, that um, will give you back as much as you put into it. So I really do encourage you guys, if you're on the fence about it, uh, to learn more. Go on either my website or just Google it in general. I think that you guys will have a good time and it's one of the simplest, most efficient ways to get financial independence. Now I'm going to be starting off, I'm going to be taking my hourglass um, vanish stick in the shade shell, which is basically my foundation color. And I'm just going to use this to prime the eyes. And I want to make sure that I cover the whole entire eyelid from the bottom to the top. Lots of tips and tricks today, you guys. You are going to be so shocked when you see the result. So for, for today's palette, I'm going to be using the Pat McGrath Green palette. I really love this chocolate brown shade right here. It's really useful. And I might dip back and forth between this one and my Urban Decay OG Vice palette right here. So let's just see where it takes us, you know? Let's see where it goes. So for my base color, I'm going to be using this one right here. And that's gonna take up most of the room on my lid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it. And it's slightly darker than um, the skin tone, so I think it'll have a really nice subtle washed out effect. And the formula, it's so pretty that using one shimmer eyeshadow, it almost feels like you're using three different eyeshadows. So you see, I already got this look done just like that. So now I'm gonna slightly deepen the color using this matte brown shade on the bottom. And I'm just gonna deepen the color towards the wing. And we're gonna sweep the shade all the way up into the uh, brow bone area. So, oh my god, I'm like the queen of vintage palettes. So right here I have my Urban Decay Vice OG palette, like Vice 1, <laughs> that I depotted and I love dearly. And I'm going to go into the light shade of this Tarte palette right here. This is the Tarte Contour palette. So I'm going to use that to contour my eye. And when you contour the eye, make sure you contour un right under the brows into the nose bridge, going into the nose bridge, you're gonna create a lot of definition and you're going to make your eyes look a lot more deep set. So if you already have deep set eyes, you definitely don't wanna do this. But if you're somebody Asian or if you just don't have a lot of definition um, in the immediate eye area, then this is a really nice way to add a lot of depth and interest in general to the eyes. And it it's what makes your eyes pop, ultimately. It's not the shimmer, but the contour that makes the eyes pop. And how dramatically you want to do this, it just depends on your own preference. Um, for me, I like to do it pretty decently dramatic. I'm a huge fan of transformative, like costumish makeup. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like TikTok so much. But yeah, TikTok makeup is really easy to replicate. Like for somebody like me, because I kind of know all of the tips and tricks already. So it's like, oh, okay, I see this, I see you. So for this look, I'm actually going to, for like the first time in a long time, I'm going to extend the contour into my nose. I am already regretting it because I have like a bump in my nose. So when I do a contour, it makes it look really obvious. And I also have a lot of pores in my nose. So yeah, I don't know why I did that. I really don't know why I did that anyway. Anyway, we're going to blend this out with our, um, our, our concealer brush. Boom. We're gonna blend this out with our concealer brush that we used for our foundation shade. So hopefully this thing looks a little bit more natural. Probably not, honestly. You really shouldn't contour your nose if you have oily skin. Let this be a lesson. You know, I'm gonna do it anyway, and this is about as good as you can get with an oily nose. 
only powder when you absolutely need to because otherwise the um the buildup from the powder it's just gonna make you look cakey and weird and is it fair no but is it reality yeah hd powder is your best friend if you like taking a lot of pictures and you're oily this will cover up all of your pores so i'm gonna be using my makeup forever liner pencil and i'm gonna start tracing the signature under eye bags yeah we're gonna be creating under eye bags super exciting so um the easiest way to do it honestly is just to like kind of squint a little bit like my favorite thing to do is just you know pretend somebody gave you a thinly veiled insult just be like hmm, hmm. hold that face trace see and now you got a bag absolutely wonderful and I suggest that you keep this line somewhat thin and slender so it doesn't look like a dark eye circle and more like a crease. So when you blend this out, you're gonna focus on only the edges so it doesn't look deeply harsh, but it looks just harsh enough that, you, that it reads as a crease and not as a splotch. And I know it looks really jarring right now. <laughs> it looks kind of like shit. And I know it looks really jarring at first, but I think once everything else is on, it will look somewhat normal. And this is why when people, um, cause I actually did see some comments on like Facebook and stuff where people, oh, by the way, I'm gonna take this same liner and I'm gonna start lining from the outside and I'm gonna taper it in. And I'm going to make a point at the inner corner. And that's the signature look. So yeah, people have been saying that they wanted to try this. I'm assuming people that are not Asian have been voicing that they want to try this look, but they don't want to like step on anyone's toes and come across as Asian fishing. And you know what? I need to speak about this because this is exactly what I was afraid of when people were coming after Ariana Grande because, yo, this shit is not Asian fishing. Nobody looks like this. Like deadass, who, who looks like this? You're putting on so much makeup, you're doing so many transformative things to your face. And yes, just because a lot of Asian people do it doesn't mean that you're culturally appropriating if you try it yourself. Like, I'm sick of people trying to basically virtue signal because that's what it is, right? You're just virtue signaling at that point. Just like, knock it off. You guys, knock it off. It's just makeup. There's no such thing as Asian fishing with makeup unless you're doing like what they did in Cloud Atlas, in which case, Big yikes, mega yikes, but nobody's doing that. They're just doing K-pop makeup and just because a white girl or a black girl wants to wear K-pop makeup doesn't mean that they're um, doing anything bad. You know, it's just makeup. Please, 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 I'm begging you guys, please do not gatekeep makeup. Okay, so I'm gonna do the corners. And the corner is what really elongates the eye, so you wanna make sure to give yourself a little bit of a tiny point in the inner corner. It doesn't have to be like the cleanest thing ever because you're using brown, you're not using black and you're using a pencil, not a pen. Um, so, you know, if you mess up here and there, it's okay. That's why when some people ask me like, oh, um, because they know I'm a, a, like a editorial artist and you know, when you do um, makeup for like magazines and stuff, people will ask sometimes like, uh, do you get nervous? Like what happens if you mess up? And a lot of people don't like my answer because my answer is basically like, if you mess up, just like pretend that you didn't. <laughs> pretend that it never happened. Or if you think that you did something that's different from what you envisioned, just make sure that it looks intentional and it will look intentional. You know, lead with confidence, fake it till you make it, all that shit. And like, nobody believes me. But you know, if you mess up to a certain degree, I would suggest just take a makeup wipe, wipe it all off and start over. Because at the end of the day, it's just makeup. It's really not that deep. But yeah, it's actually pretty easy and it's really, um, it's really fun to get into makeup. Just don't stress out over things that don't need any stress attached to it. And you will be very happy, especially if you decide to make this your career. You just can't afford to like stress over a little stuff. Um, I'm gonna try to find a white pencil with a bit of a shimmer to it, like this Urban Decay one, which is like one of my favorites actually. So the white Urban Decay pencils are the best. So I'm just gonna shade into the bag. So now going back into that thinly veiled insult, like, mm, 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 
you know, going back to this look right here, you see how your eye bag puffs out when you squint? You want to further emphasize, emph <laughs> you want to further emphasize this baggy bulge. Baggy bulge? Is there a better way to put it? Probably not. And while the cream from the pencil is still fresh, I recommend that you go over it once with a powder. So I'm gonna use my Makeup Forever Starlet Powder in the shade Ivory, and I'm gonna use this over my pencil. Ooh, it's so bright. This is actually really funny. And if you add a lot of highlight, um, you might find yourself going back into the eyeliner. Um, if you think that you covered too much of it, that's fine. You can always take your Makeup Forever pencil and go back over a powder with a pencil. It's gonna be really easy. Okay. 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 Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. This looks very different. So now to blend the pencil with the lower lash area and to further droop down the back of the eyes a little bit, I am going to take a pencil brush with a pointy tip. This like weird dog chewed up looking Sephora one is one of my favorites actually. You know, I'm not gonna disrespect you guys with this, <laughs> with this brush. I'm gonna take out a new one. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm gonna use this brush and I'm gonna go back into that chocolate brown from my Pat McGrath palette. And then I'm just gonna blend right along the outside edge of that pencil. And I'm not afraid to kind of droop that down a little bit further than what I normally do because I wanna give that kind of puppy dog, puppy eye, <laughs> that puppy eye look. Cause that also goes in with that whole like ABG aesthetic. And if you guys haven't seen my ABG puppy liner look, I highly recommend it. I think it's a really fun look to try and you'd be surprised at what comes out of it at the end because it's a really transformative eyeliner technique. So a lot of these looks, you know, I'm not trying to like throw shade or anything, but I noticed that a lot of these looks, when you zoom in, they just don't look good. And the reason why is because they're, they're um, creating an illusion and they're really supposed to transform the face as a whole. But you know, in terms of like, in terms of like detail and all that like technical technical stuff, once you zoom into like the, the like crease and stuff, it doesn't really look that natural. It doesn't really look that good because we're using makeup, we're not photoshopping. So that's why, you know, your your brain kind of like breaks the illusion a little bit when you zoom in. But when you zoom out, that's when it is the most transformative. I hope that makes sense because it, I don't know, I can't explain things that well, but yeah, it is what it is. You actually have a lot of options when it comes to the lower lash line. You can either use mascara only, or you can use a combination of mascara and um, lower lash inserts, or even like a strip lash for the lower lash line. It's up to you. For me, I try my best to stick to just mascara because my eyes are too sensitive for the strip. Otherwise, I would have loved to do it. It, um, it honestly looks so much better with fake lashes. You know what, let me see if I can try it. Okay, so I usually don't do lower lash line lashes because yikes, um, they're so uncomfortable. They're like borderline painful, but you know, they look really good. So you can do it if you want. Okay, so finally we're gonna do our wing and it's gonna be just like a standard wing. Maybe make it a little bigger than you're normally used to because we're gonna do big lashes. And I'm gonna be using the Kiss You Do You lashes right here. So when you're talking about wet look lashes, you see how these are like really spiky? What makes the lashes look wet is that um, lashes clump together when they're wet, right? So they form little spikes at the end. The difference between um, spiky lashes and wet lashes is that they use some sort of adhesive to join the spikes so that they form a really sharp tip. And that's what makes them distinctly look wet versus spiky. So just wanna show you guys real fast. And I, um, so far, Ardell and Kiss are the only lashes I found that actually do this. Um, Ardell has the spike lashes. I don't remember if they make them wet or not, but the Kiss, um, wet look lashes definitely make them look wet. I only bought two of the lashes because the other two are just like, they're so dramatic. You can't wear them as somebody with a um, monolids or hooded eyes or just not huge eyes in general. 
but these are nice. These are like barely small enough that I could justify them. I cut them so that they only fit maybe like four fifth of my eye. So I'm leaving one fifth of my eye completely clean and I'm gonna start this lash right here, right where my pupil starts, I think. Yeah. And that way it will look a little less dramatic, hopefully, but geez, these are really, really spiky. So yeah, I wish Kiss made lashes that are a little bit not so dramatic, maybe a little shorter would have worked for um, Asian people, I think, for the most part. These, surprisingly, they don't even have that much of a curl. They're just really spiky, spiky, thick, bold and audacious. Honestly, if I had to do this over, I would have done a custom pair of lashes. So probably for my next video, I'm gonna do that. Okay, it looks kind of bad, all right. No wonder these came out during Halloween. These would have looked fire during Halloween. Fun fact, I wore one of these for Halloween. I wore the other one drenched. I wore these on Halloween. I was, um, I was, I was Hellraiser, I was Pinhead. So yeah, I had these on. So maybe I should switch my lashes because these are just not it at all. I mean, it's still like, I stand by what I said. This kind of makeup looks a lot better from far away. <laughs> We're gonna try a different pair of wet lashes. No, I made the mistake of not doing full custom lashes, which is like my specialty. Now I look like a clown and I feel like a lunatic because I poked myself a million times in the eye. Doesn't matter. So the next one I'm gonna show you guys is the one called Drenched right here. Wow, so much better, geez. Oh my God, big ass wings, thick ass band. I feel like an ABG, like for real this time. Okay, let's wrap this shit up because this is the lash. I think that if you are an ABG, I mean, if you're Asian, you can maybe like barely get away with this one. Um, so the style is called Drenched and you can get it from Kiss. Uh, yeah, I mean, these are really pretty. I think they're entirely too dramatic for, I mean, day to day, geez. I didn't even say anything. I'm just like, I don't know what to feel. Um, I do like the wet look. I think this definitely helps you create that ABG look. Um, I think wet look lashes are a little bit too annoying to make at home. I mean, don't just take my word for it, try it out yourself. But I think for me, this is a really good solution for somebody who wants to try on the wet look, kind of like dip your toes in. <laughs> but, <laughs> gotta hate myself. But yeah, um, I really do enjoy this one. Um, these are really pretty lashes. They really threw my um, Hellraiser costume together. So I'm a huge fan of it. Um, so let's just wrap this up and we'll be on our way. So I'm going to go into my bronzer and I'm going to be using the Hula bronzer today because I want a warm tone look to match my hair. And um, I use overtone, rose gold, um, still damp, you know, it's all good. But yeah, having a bronzer as a contour really helps when you are, um, when you're going for a more warm toned overall look. So I'm going to do a sweep of bronzer, just generally dust it all over. And you see how the Wayne Goss airbrush, which is what I'm using, it just distributes the product so beautifully. I barely have to do anything else. And you know what? I won't. And for the final look, I'm going to be using my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. The, um, now the sticker got messed up, so I can't tell what shade it is. Yeah, so it's right here. It's really pretty. It's this like amber color. Yeah, I really do love Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. If you can get your hands on one, I highly recommend it. Just about any color works. Um, the formula is really pretty. So I'm gonna blend out the lip line. You can use your finger to dab it out a little bit. So then you get this really soft diffused effect that's really popular in Asia too. It's actually popular like everywhere right now. It's, it's the in thing. You can go into a slightly orangish pink blush like this Tom Ford one right here and then just gently buff that into the cheek, right into that bronzer shade. If you want a highlight, I recommend something like the Urban Decay Sin Highlight, um, kind of like a nude toned, buildable highlight. So you can start a little subtle and then you can build it up more as you go. 
And because this is TikTok makeup, we are permitted to highlight our nose. Oh God, I hate that. Oh God, such a mistake. I can't stop doing it now. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not gonna do this part. All right, so this is gonna be today's look. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this week's beauty talk. If you like this video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from me, let me know by hitting subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And if you want to support my channel, my growing channel, um, please leave a comment below. Comment anything you want to let me know and I will respond to all of them. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this week's beauty talk and I will see you in the next one.